I've had people look at me funny when I complain, but the thing is, is I have, I've seen it. You know, I might rant and rave and carry on, but I feel like I can because I've actually been out there and seen what's going on, not just in this one particular spot, but the whole watershed. Yeah, this used to be a beautiful section of swamp to come down to the river on. But you're starting to see a lot of this where they're coming in specifically for the bottomlands. There's really important habitat along these rivers. It seems like the further we go upriver where it's less accessible to people, in other words, where people are not readily motorboating and kayaking and canoeing, you see more examples of uh, bad logging practices. I've been flying for 49 years and over, over that span of time, I've seen a lot of timber cutting and I just thought maybe somebody ought to be doing something about this. And this madness needs to stop. Viva is pretty much solely sourcing from remaining stands of, 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 of hardwoods. Biomass is not green energy. When you burn coal, you're burning something that's essentially been compressed over time. So to make that equivalent amount of energy from wood products, you have to produce four times as much wood. At the end of the day, you've gone from using what you know, we generally would have allowed to grow in the southeast and become a southeastern component of sequestering these emissions. If you take some of those away and then also at the same time put it through this long process, industrial process, a product from the ground that's harvested, processed, transported, shipped to another continent, and at some point or another, the green stamp gets on the product and they over there consider themselves you know, using better energy. We are producing more carbon in the air. If we're talking about real clean energy, real green energy, the first thing we have to do is acknowledge that we're actually moving backwards, not forwards. We believe that everyone should have a clean, safe place to live, work, and play. Um, and Viva has come in and distracted the living conditions of this community. Well, I tell you, my concern is that noise and that beating and that bumming all through the night. Your homes are here, and they put something like that right in the middle. It just seemed like something could be done about it. You know, I just didn't thought that you could rob people from their sleep. Nobody come in the neighborhood to get get our opinions about a new plant coming in town. It, it was done behind our back. My husband had to get up and go to work at four o'clock, and he constantly, you know, he can't get any sleep. His bronchitis has been acting up. My son's silences, allergy, been acting up real bad. This is what they're going to have to live with. Um, it's an injustice to them. I have always said, you know, when I was younger growing up, you didn't see the, ex the extent or nor the frequency of logging that you see along the rivers. But I think it's pretty, pretty clear if you, you look around and look at the industries that have moved in and are currently moving in that things are picking up, you know, as far as the logging goes. I'm really worried about what these rivers might look like and what might pass as a forest in the next 15 years. If they're going to somehow fill this demand, this new demand for biomass through wood, they're going to have to get this biomass from industrial clear cutting. There's no way to supply that kind of demand without industrial logging. It's huge, I mean, it stretches way up that way, way down that way. There's pine plantations on uh, two sides. It's kind of one of those things that's out of sight, out of mind for most people. Anybody driving by wouldn't see it, but they're coming through and cutting out forests. You know, these are, these are old trees. They've been around here for a while.
You only got what you got left now, and it seems to me uh, pretty important to try to hold on at least to what we do have.